Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Wa Ati Allah Ati Rasul Wa Ulul Amri Yaminkum And always a reminder from myself and Abdul Ajisu, Da'ifu, Miskinu, Zalimu, Jahal and but for the grace of Allah that I'm still in existence. Alhamdulillah as a reminder always for myself of days of difficulty that the Dajjal system and in last days people begin to lose their iman. And in this understanding is important because they don't lose and what is the reality of iman? Because the reality of iman is what protects us and saves us from all the difficulties that are coming. That real iman is what Sayyidina Muhammad described, Ya Umar you have to love me more than you love yourself, your father and your brothers. Means anything that is dear to you, your culture, your understanding of what you love, the love of Sayyidina Muhammad has to be greatest and that is the reality of faith. Islamic faith according to Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah this is in our aqeedah. Faith is not the loving of only Allah and that is where the Dajjal begin to separate everyone. Because when you become separated from hawla and quwwa, any type of help and power you become separated from the awzu and the safety and refuge of what Allah has sent to us, we find ourselves then to be exposed. And tariqahs and shuyukh they come to give like the secret in the formula where 99% of all people may pass that as something you know, what does it matter? And that they come to teach us that that's the secret within this formula. That the belief in Allah is great but it's not belief, it's merely you've accepted your Lord. And when the Arabi from Qur'an came, the Bedouins that were in the desert and they're very harsh in their belief and understanding and they came to Sayyidina Muhammad and said, we believe and they use the word iman. And Allah clarified for them that, no, tell them that they don't have iman but they merely accepted Islam. So it means that the acceptance of Islam is one step but it's not the safety of what's coming in the last days. And what comes in the last days of immense hardships, immense trials and, and tribulations which we see all over the world all of these deaths from pandemic, from sickness, from flus, from fear, from poverty, from uh, being closed, their work being closed, every person being stressed, they don't know how to make their rizq, they don't know what the shot they're supposed to take, they don't know what type of sickness is overcoming them. From every direction testing is coming now. So merely just accepting Islam is not going to be the key that saves the believer. So Dajjal and the Dajjal system, the satanic system, shaitan, evilness, whatever we want to call the opponent that Allah has put upon this earth that slowly picks away where the protection in the formula is. And if he can take away the key of that protection, the key of that barakah, that key in the formula that makes every fires and every satisfaction from Allah to flow to the believer, it's like one number off on a code. And anybody who has dealt with PIN numbers now or uh, try to go to your bank app, try to go to any type of app that you have. And just be one number off on your code, you can't get in.
And what Allah then wants as an example of that just says, don't think it's so simple that you merely accepted Islam and some people all their life they are at the maqam of only Islam. They think they reached iman, they say, oh yeah I pray, I, I, I believe in Ramadan, I do my fasting of Ramadan and they mention all these things. But only come into our life and say, no that Prophet taught the maqam of iman, its reality is that you have to love Sayyidina Muhammad more than you love yourself, that becomes the key of everything you do. If we miss that pin in this pin code that we're trying to enter, nothing seems to work. And that's what Dajjal's purpose is to begin to pick at people's belief and they think something to be maybe insignificant but it may be the whole reality that opens up into the Divinely Presence. And that's what we're dealing with when people are communicating now and saying, why do I need this and why do we have to have Prophet mentioned, why we don't just go directly to Allah why we… why, 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 why? And before you know it Dajjal has picked away at your faith. The aqidah and the belief <coughs> excuse me, of shaitan was that he accepted no one no one and no wasila, no means to Allah but to directly deal with Allah and when Allah asked shaitan, bow down, show respect for the knowledge that I have bestowed upon Sayyidina Adam salam, and Allah is giving the order that bow down and shaitan said, no I won't do it. So that belief of arrogance. That belief that I'll deal directly only with Allah is how shaitan picks away at the barakah and the blessings of someone's faith in which their faith becomes an ocean of hypocrisy. And we have spoken many times, anybody can go to the Nur Muhammad and anybody who has questions that are not being answered on online, maybe they feel shy to have it online or whatever it is, if you have a question no problem you send it to help me at nurmuhammad.com and we try our best to, to put some guidance onto that subject and if it's something that we can bring out in public onto the the live broadcast we can use it at that time. You go to Nur Muhammad and there's a search box and you type in Madad and there's all these talks that have been over the years on the subject of Madad and the subject of tawassal that we took a path in which to be humble, in which I need Ya Rabbi, I'm a servant in continuous need. We talked even on the subject that Sayyidina Zakariya for 99 years a Prophet of Allah who was head of the temple of Jerusalem and making du'a for 99 years and Allah never accepted his du'a on a particular subject of he wanted a child for his inheritance, to inherit his way and to take from what he has been bestowed upon by Allah to give to his awlad and to his child. When Allah shows humility that for 99 years asking and du'a not being accepted until one day he walked into the niche, into the prayer maqam of Sitna Maryam And he realized that <coughs> the emanation <coughs> within this maqam and the fruits and sustenance being bestowed upon her presence is not something normal. His heart tells him that this is something spiritual, this is something from Divinely Presence. At that moment it occurred to him to make the du'a that he's been asking. At that very moment Sayyidina Jibreel salam appeared to him, your du'a is accepted. Means what? Means Allah wants humble servants that you don't say, oh, I'm going to deal only with Allah, directly with Allah as if you're going to have a telephone call, pick up and Allah Allah on the other side is answering for your calls. Our whole life is to seek a means. If you get stuck on the freeway and you're a person who believes, I'm only going to deal with Allah do you really think that you have that level of faith that you just stop, wait and Allah will send help? If you're that one, 
and you have that connection with your heart and with your yaqeen then alhamdulillah 99.9% .9 of the rest of the people they have to pick up a phone and they have to call for tow truck or police. That is a tawassal, you're using the phone that Allah gave to you, the fingers Allah gave to you, the ability to call for help and call the police is a means of seeking Allah's help because if they, if they answer and they come Allah inspired them, go. Because if you call and there's nobody comes and say, we're all closed then Allah inspired them not to help you. But either way as a human you're in need of the phone to reach out for help and support. If that's for a tow truck are, are we thinking that we're going to call Allah directly? And we have that level of purity, we have that level of, of sincerity that we have that relationship. And even the Prophets of Allah didn't feel like that. And even Allah wanted to show His Prophets for our sake because their qasim, their story is in Holy Qur'an for us to understand. If my Prophets were in need of a tawassul, how dare you think that you don't need a means in which to approach? Me and Allah said in Holy Qur'an, seek a means in which to approach. Use a tawassal in which to approach towards this reality. Even he gave the example of the Prophet who talks to him, Sayyidina Musa salam, Kalimullah of the big six Prophets of Allah's Divinely Presence, one whom already has a line of communication means he didn't need to call a tow truck, he talks directly to Allah but when he wanted a certain level of knowledge, why Allah didn't bestow on him and start talking about that knowledge? And he said, no, you must go to one of my servants and seek out that reality and that knowledge. Again is a life of humility, no matter what Allah bestows upon us we are trying to be a humble creation in which I'm abdikal ajis, I'm a servant, I'm poor, I'm in need, I'm, I'm uh, dirty, I know that I'm an oppressor to myself, I'm ebasing or effacing myself to bring myself low. I don't need you to knock me in the head to bring me down Ya Rabbi, I will try my best to do that myself. As I bring myself low I'm in need of your support Ya Rabbi. I'm in need of whatever help that you can give to me. Although I walk through the valley of death, I fear not Ya Rabbi but I know that you're with me. Surround me with those whom you love and whom you have a love for. And that's what Allah wants from His servant to be humble. This humility is then the love of all the Prophets, love of all the Salihin, all the Sahabi, all Ahlul Bayt, all the awliyaullah who are inheriting from them fi samahi wa fil ard so that, Ya Rabbi we are in need what you gave and bestowed to them of whatever blessings and barakah you gave to them Ya Rabbi send to us for we are in need of that. That belief is the belief that builds that secret code for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and that love is what saves us. So then the key and the secret for all of this reality is the wow and wadud which is love. The love for Allah its reality so the wow, the wadud of Allah equals and it should be the love of Sayyidina Muhammad So it's like a formula we write that if you truly love me and Allah is asking us, قُلِنِي كُنْتُمْ تُهِبُونَ اللَّهِ تُهِبُونَ اللَّهِ Ask them if they really love me فَتَبِيُونِي They should be following you and then that became the whole talk. If they're following you they have to love you more than they love themselves. If they're really following you, don't they see me? Don't they feel me and my attributes within you and your love? When we say, Ya Rasul Kareem, these are shaqeen when they have this love and they have this love, every difficulty becomes relieved by that love because they call out to Allah and they see themselves 
in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad asking Prophet that when I'm an oppressor to myself Allah ordered me Jauka when astaghfirullah that to run to you because I am an oppressor to myself and ask that you ask Allah I'm no one to ask anyone but you ask Allah for my sake. Means that they see themselves when they're meditating and they're asking for, for forgiveness, they're asking, I'm at their threshold say, Ya Rasulul Kareem, ask Allah for my relief, ask Allah to take away every difficulty. Mm. Ask Allah for madad and support. Does anyone think that if they're sincerely at that threshold of Sayyidina Muhammad that Allah would be angered by them? That Allah, Allah would be upset by them? This was Allah's Qur'an. فَتَابِيُونِي وَيُحِبُكُمُ Allah That the servant understood who you are, understood that I was a hidden treasure and found me within you. Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem that we find the love of Allah within this reflection we need the human understanding. We need to interact with creation, this creation has to interact with creation. There's no way for it to understand the level of the Creator and that avoids every type of disinformation because if you take out the formula of Muhammadun Rasulullah who's your imam? Who's your example? The man at the mosque who's bald head and no hair and has no hat on his head and maybe a beard, maybe no beard, talks like a gangster when he gives khutbah. He's our example of what Allah wants. Or some man on a video or some man on YouTube or who, who, who then represents the reality? No one, no one represents that reality to the perfection of Sayyidina Muhammad. Not a Prophet not a Prophet on this creation came to that level of perfection that reaches the perfection of Sayyidina Muhammad so it becomes the key of our existence that when I say, no my life is about the love of Sayyidina Muhammad you become less likely to be fooled, less likely to be moved in a different direction because if my goal is to achieve this love, to have the mawli, to be sincere, to be humble, to try my best to be at the mawli for if you love him you should be mentioning him. If you love Allah you should be from the people of dhikrullah. How come they don't attend the dhikr? How come they don't listen to the dhikrullah? Their whole life should be of that reality. That gives us the symbol so that shaitan not to fool us, no I'm in love with Sayyidina Muhammad Anything that teaches that reality, that brings me closer to that example, that I want to be under that flag, you're less likely to be fooled in life. And our life was about to love that reality more than we love ourselves so that we gain the light, the blessings <coughs> and the immense protection that Allah is going to bestow upon this creation. And now what shaitan is doing is take that away and take that away and take that away so that people begin to say, oh you know I have a doubt on that and I don't really need anything between me and Allah. And that's okay, good for you. You keep with that belief and see how far that gets you. <coughs> it's not very humble. It's not a very humble understanding. We pray that Allah in these days of difficulty grant us more and more love for Sayyidina Muhammad and that builds and that answers the question on how to develop the relationship with the shaykh. The shaykh is the Muhammadan representative, the shaykh that talks and we, we have gotten many emails and it's very interesting a lot of people yeah, we don't ever mention names 
about a particular shaykh that talks about the last days. And unfortunately I mentioned his name in some sort of context and oh we got a lot of emails, oh you should work together and he's a great shaykh, he's a great shaykh. I said, this is not the… that was not the talk, we never judge who's a great shaykh, not a great shaykh, it's not our business. We said that whoever teaches, whatever they teach, if they don't teach the solution then they're part of the problem, they're only halfway into the deal. If somebody tells you about last days, last days, last days, then Juja Majuj is Russia, the Juja Majuj is this, the Juja Majuj, this is nonsense. The, the, the understanding of last days is you read the hadith when the clock appears, the time has arrived. Okay, the clock is there in Mecca, time is here now, that's it. It doesn't need a, a deep understanding. But the solution that when you see these days coming, when you see mankind locked in their homes, when you see the red death and white death means the death of war, war everywhere, then you see the death of sudden death from sicknesses, now you have reached into akhir zaman. Now the, the time is ending upon this earth, what's the solution? Is that you should be running to Sayyidina Muhammad that we should have an immense love, we should be in our mawlids and our zikrs. You should now grow, grow if this is the time that you're going to pass away, then pass away in the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad in this noble and majestic sunnah that you adorn yourself from that way if that's whom you love. That's what saves us, that's what all this teaching should be. So find those whom embody that reality, try their best to live the example of that reality, teach that reality and conduct the weekly majlises of that reality. If you found something like that then support it with your life, with your death, with your wealth, with your possessions and make your faith to be real. It's very simple, قُلْ إِنِي كُنْتُمْ تُهِبُونَ اللَّهُ فَاتَّبِيُونِي My life then was to follow that way. And then the people of faith they put their whole faith in that way. They attend the majlis, now this majlis is online for all over the world. They can support from anywhere in the world. They can support with their time, they can do all sorts of trans… trans… transcribing. There are people who should be transcribing the talks, the YouTube talks in Spanish. We have a huge Spanish audience in the Northern and Southern uh, America, North America, South America. So I mean there's so many things that could be done, we just really have to want to take that step. As soon as you're of service, as soon as you're, you're participating, as soon as you're, you're communicating, as soon as you're contributing, you are under the nazar of the shaykhs. For even a grain of rice in their direction they're watching and they're vigilantly watching. Some shaykhs that have been given a permission they're responding continuously, shukran, 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 shukran. Don't think it's an auto reply, the shaykh is actually replying for everything that been given, by every support that been given, for everything that they're getting from their rings, from everything. That when you give you're under their nazar, when you participate you're under their nazar, when you support in the activities that they're doing coming into the zikr, going online, you're under the nazar. And that nazar is a continuous shukr and continuous thing, whomever sees through their eyes is seeing what you write and what you do. Whomever speaks through their lips is speaking to you from what you've done and, and what they appreciate, they are merely phones for a greater purpose and that becomes the reality of our lives. So for whatever we're doing all we have to do is participate and be active and you are most definitely under their nazar and anyone who knows these shaykhs knows how active they are, they're involved in everything. There's nothing that escapes them, they know who wrote, who complained, who did this, who did that because every step of the way they're, they're watching and praying. They pray from the ones whom trying to harm them that Allah keep those away, the ones whom trying to support them and to be of a, of a help that Allah bless them, dress them. They read about the ones whom feel sick or their family are sick or their children are in difficulty. And say, Ya Rabbi for the sake of their support, their love for Sayyidina Muhammad take away a difficulty. 
And alhamdulillah this is the, the life that they lead. We pray that Allah save us and save us from Dajjal picking at our faith and to remember the, the just of this whole talk tonight, faith is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Don't think you have faith if you took out Prophet and you start to begin to only talk about Allah That's not what Allah wants. Allah says, قُلِينِ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ If they want my love فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحِبُّكُمُ Allah. Allah's reply, I will love them. What do you imagine if Allah loves you? You'll be knocked out from these blessings. You feel immense love, immense appreciation for Divinely Presence. You feel the generosity of the love of Prophet is the emanation of Allah's satisfaction. Because you love Sayyidina Muhammad Allah feels shy to see you in difficulty. If you're in pain and you're crying to Prophet Allah feels shy that you're going to Prophet and, and crying that way Allah will relieve the difficulty inshaAllah because of that love of bear, because of the, the greatness of the station of Sayyidina Muhammad because Allah not doing it only for me and you. But he feels sad that Prophet is becoming sad that one of my lovers is at my threshold crying because of their difficulty, because of their child, because of their, their sustenance. And if Prophet becomes saddened by that, don't you think Allah becomes sad? And as a, relief, as a, as a, as a way Allah relieves that difficulty. So there's many secrets in this reality and in this relationship. We pray that Allah protect us from a dajjal system which is meant to take away faith, take away faith, take away faith until the person finds themselves with an umbrella filled with holes and no protection from the difficulties that are coming upon this earth. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. May Allah keep all our children, our family, our communities, all our loved ones to be safe Ameen. and that Allah Ameen. make this year to be a, a, a blessed year, Ameen. protect us against any type of difficulties, any type of plans, Ameen. whomever's planning Allah's plan is supreme. Okay. Ya Rabbi keep us under your, your plan, Ameen. keep us under your nazar, keep us under the protection and the love and the khirqah of Sayyidina Muhammad Ashab al-Nabi Ahlul Bayt al-Nabi and all your only Allah fi samahi wa fil ard Ya Rabbi keep us under that protection bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.